Most of you will not work in terrain this steep on a daily basis, and we all know that logging on steep terrain is not the primary cause of sedimentation and water quality issues in our state. However, the work that you do in the logging woods every day does have the potential to cause erosion and negatively impact water quality. Fortunately, you can maintain productivity and ensure protection of our state's water resources by applying the appropriate best management practices, or BMPs, to your site. In this video, we will show you several stabilization techniques that you can use to ensure that your forestry activity is in compliance with best management practices. When you think of stabilization, probably the first thing that comes to mind is a water bar. When properly constructed, they are extremely effective water control structures. Basically, all a water bar is is a hump of dirt in the road, skid trail, or fire break designed to stop water from flowing down the hill and direct it off into undisturbed forest floor. There are four main components to an effective water bar. First, they must be tied in to the uphill side of the road. If they are not tied in, the water will simply run around the water bar and it will not function. Second, it must be set at a gentle angle to the road. If it is built straight across the road, water will pond behind it and will eventually break through and again will not function as it was intended. If it is built at too steep an angle, water will not be slowed down enough and will eventually end up running straight downhill causing erosion issues as it goes. Ideally, a water bar should be built at roughly a 30 degree angle to the road. Third, the water bar should be packed in, not just be a big pile of loose dirt. Within the first few rainfall events, the loose soil will be washed down the road and not only will the water bar be destroyed, but all of the dirt used to construct the water bar will also be washed into the stream that is most likely at the bottom of the hill. Lastly, every water bar needs to have a turnout on the downhill side. The water needs a place to go or it will sit behind the water bar and will eventually blow it out. The turnouts do not need to be excessively long, usually 10 to 20 feet is adequate. The turnout should not run into any type of drain or stream. It is often the tendency of the operator to put the water back into a drain. This defeats the purpose of constructing the water bar. The purpose of the water bar is to get the water and any sediment it is carrying off of the road and out into the woods. By diverting the turnouts into a drain, all of the water and sediment from the road is being funneled directly into a stream. The following video illustrates the proper method for constructing an effective water bar. In the interest of time, the video has been sped up.
This failed water bar is a great example of what can happen if your water bars are not properly constructed. As you can see, instead of being built at a 30 degree angle to the road, it was built straight across. There's also no outlet for the water to leave the road and the dirt that was used to construct it was not properly compacted. This water bar lasted less than two weeks before ponded water caused it to fail. Now any water flowing down the skid trail flows unobstructed down the hill into the perennial stream at the bottom. The crew that did this closeout work will now have to bring a piece of equipment back to this job and redo the work they had previously done. While it may take you a few more minutes to do your stabilization work right the first time, it will save you time and money in the long run and ensure that you are in compliance with all best management practices. Proper spacing of water bars is also important. There are two methods to determine how far apart water bars should be spaced. Your state's BMP manual should include a table that you can reference or you can use our rule of thumb method. Stand at the base of the hill and look straight ahead. The point where your eye meets the slope is where your first water bar should go. Walk up to that point, hang a flag, and repeat the process until you have reached the top of the hill. Follow up with a bulldozer and construct water bars at every flag location. This method works very well in most conditions. However, if the road or skid trail is in very steep terrain, this method will space the water bars too close together. Refer to the table in the BMP manual or contact your local BMP forester for guidance in these situations. If a road with regular vehicle traffic needs to be stabilized, broad-based dips are a good alternative to water bars. Their construction and purpose is the same. However, a broad-based dip, as the name suggests, is wider, which allows a vehicle to maintain normal speeds while traveling down the road. If water bars cannot be constructed, there are a few alternative measures that can be used. One of the most effective and readily available methods is to use slash to cover exposed soil. The key is to lay a blanket of slash and not just a stray pile. The slash should cover the entire area to be stabilized. If only a single pile is dropped, the water will flow under and around the pile and it will not prevent any erosion. This method can obviously only be used in areas where vehicle traffic will not occur. Slash can also be used in a skid trail when rutting begins to occur. Packing the ruts with slash and continuing to use the original skid trail rather than relocating it will cause less overall impact to the site. In some cases, it may be necessary to use grass seed and straw to adequately stabilize an area. If this is the case, it is best to use a mix of perennial and annual seeds to ensure you have some come up quickly, but then also some that will continue to come back year after year to stabilize the area until natural vegetation is reestablished. Rock is the most effective, but also the most expensive stabilization method. It should be used on highly erosive roads in conjunction with water bars and at stream crossings. Stream crossings are by far the highest risk location for water quality impacts on your job. It is imperative that BMPs are followed in the construction and stabilization of any crossing. The level of stabilization will vary depending on the size and method of the crossing. Permanent culvert crossings should be stabilized on the up and downstream sides using large rock and grass seed. Ensure the culvert being used is long enough so that the slope of the field dirt is gentle enough to hold the rock. Debris crossings should be completely removed to restore the natural flow of the stream. Approaches and stream banks need to be stabilized by installing the appropriate number of water bars, scattering slash to cover exposed soil, and if necessary, establishing vegetation using grass seed and straw. You should feel confident that no dirt will wash from your approaches or crossing when stabilization is complete. If you have any questions about constructing or stabilizing a crossing, please contact your local BMP forester. We hope this video has given you a few tools to use when considering how to best stabilize your forestry operation. Again, adequate stabilization will prevent soil movement and ensure the protection of our state's water resources. Remember, healthy forests equal clean water. Use best management practices.